why did Apostle Paul say to the Greeks that they are foolish? He said, Oh, foolish Greeks, who have bewitched you? Are you so foolish? Why did he say that? Why should somebody tell somebody that he's foolish? To be foolish when somebody is using that word, foolish, to describe somebody. It means the person does not have sense and he does not act rationally. What the person is doing is senseless. He doesn't have sense. He is a fool. The person is a fool. Now, the dictionary defines a foolish person as a silly or senseless person. A person who do things foolishly, unwise and irrational. That is how foolish, a foolish person is defined. The Oxford language, language dictionary Define a foolish person as somebody who lack good sense or good judgment, an unwise person. And such a person is very dangerous. He poses danger to himself and to even people around. Because in this world, if you are not wise, you will always become a victim. Because here in this world, Everybody live by his or her wisdom. But why did the apostle, who is supposed to teach people to be wise, is using the word foolish to describe these same people? Let us look at it, Kev. Let us look at it and examine why the apostle said that. In Galatians chapter 2, he started from here. Verse 16, he said, this is where he started. And then open up that language of foolish Galatians. In verse 16 of Galatians 2, he said, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Then he said in verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ live in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself, he gave his life for me. So I live by that faith of him who gave himself for me, not by myself, not by what ever I can do to please God. I live on that faith which I see portrayed to me on the cross. Because Jesus told a Pharisee called Nicodemus in John chapter 3 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. That is what Jesus himself said to a Pharisee who is even a teacher of the things of the law. Then Apostle Paul said, verse 21, say Galatians 2, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. This man is saying that he will never frustrate the grace of God. Maybe somebody may say that, oh, grace cannot save life. This man is saying that if righteousness come by the law, people who think they are good. They can please God by their holiness, by their righteousness. He said, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. Then he opened up from verse 1, chapter 3, to the Galatians. Galatians 3, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth. Before your eyes, Jesus Christ evidently set forth and crucified among you. Don't forget that he said in chapter 2, verse 20, that Galatians, that he lived by the faith of Jesus Christ who gave his life, gave himself for him. So he's saying that you, you have portrayed, the love of Christ portrayed 
vividly on the cross for you to see, then you want to also justify yourself at the same time. Verse 2, great in three. This only will I learn of you. Do you receive the Spirit? That is the Spirit of God, the holiness that come by the Holy Spirit. By the works of the law or by hearing faith. This is very simple. Just hear. Hear what God has done for you. That's what God requires from you. Did you receive the Spirit of God by the works of the law or by hearing faith? Are you so foolish? Verse 3. Verse 5. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he by the works of the law or by hearing faith? Everybody wants miracle. Every Christian is chasing miracle. The apostle is saying that the one who ministered to you his spirit, the Holy Spirit who performed the miracles, and who works the miracles, does he? It's a question by the works of the law or by hearing faith. So you say, because I obey all the commandments of God. I obey tithing. I obey first fruit. I obey, I don't think all your sacri- uh, uh, holiness. I give sacrifices. He's asking you, is that how you receive the miracle from the Holy Spirit? Then he said in verse 10, Galatians 3, for as many as of the works of the law are under curse. For it is written that curse is everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And nobody can do that. So that's why he's saying that everyone who is under the works of the law is under curse. Don't let anybody deceive you that if maybe you obey Ten Commandments, you are going to heaven. If you can obey tight. Pay tight, faithfully. God is going to bless you. If you can give your first fruit, the whole of a man, give everything you have. Sacrificial giving. Just bath yourself the anointing oil and you'll be all right. That person is deceiving you because here the apostle is saying that many of such people are under curse because you can't do everything under the law. And this is what the law says. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, it said, Curse is everyone who will not observe to do all that is written in the law. Everybody should obey everything. But if you look at verse 11, Great chapter 3, it said, But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So it's evident that just should live by faith. If even you can do all, you can be justified before God. That is why, that was why Jesus died. If you can satisfy God, God will never let Jesus die. What is the use then for Jesus to die? To share his blood. Now, James says something in James chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. He said, if you obey all the law, and offend one, you have offended all, you will be cursed. Because the one who said that shall not kill, is the, the same, the one who said that shall not commit adultery, is the same person who said that shall not kill. So if you do not commit adultery, but you kill, he was telling the Jews, because in John chapter 8, verse 3 to 5, the Pharisees and the scribe brought a woman to Jesus and said, he has committed adultery. So Moses had commanded them to kill her. But they didn't know that the same person, the same commandment, that same table of stones, in Ezra chapter 20 from verse 1 to 17, it is written even first, thou shalt not kill, before thou shalt not commit adultery came. So if you are not foolish, how will you bring somebody and say, you have been commanded to kill the person? When in the same commandment, that table is said, that shall not kill. So James is saying, if you think you are not committing adultery, but you are killing. He was referring to the Pharisees. You are also guilty of the law. And verse 12, the apostle is saying, the law is not of faith. 
But if any man want to live in them, fine. He can live in them. Now, it, the apostle said, chapter 4, Galatians. The reason why I said they are foolish. Verse 21, Galatians, Galatians 4, verse 21. It said, tell me, you who desire to be under the law. Don't you hear what the law, the law itself is saying. The law is saying that Abraham had two sons. One was born in the flesh. He uses his flesh to please God. And the one was born by promise, by the spirit. And he said, these are regular, these are examples. The two sons of Abraham represent two things, two covenants. Verse 24, he says it's an allegory. He shows something. The two sons of Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac, they represent two covenants. And he said, one is from Mount Sinai and gender to, to bondage, which is Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. He's revealing things here. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. And answer to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. So the Jews today are bonded to that, and they are in bondage. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Who is the mother of Esau, who believe in Christ? Verse 26. The chapter 4, verse 21, down to 26. And he warned them in Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. If they will not obey what he said, he said, Christ is then become of no effect to you. Any one of you who just fell asleep by the law, you fall from the grace. This persuasion, verse 9, is not from the one who called you. So if anybody is teaching you that unless you do this, that thing, because you cannot do this, know that God has not sent the person. Very little, destroy everything in your life. Verse 9, verse 10 to 4. There was a time in Acts chapter 15, some Jews were teaching these kind of things in the church. Acts 15, verse 1 to 6. Some Pharisees who believe were teaching this. The apostles has to meet from verse 22 to 29. Acts 15. They wrote a letter and warned that they have not sent anybody to come and teach the law of Moses and the customs of the Jews in the church. Acts chapter 15, verse 1 to 6, verse 22 to 29. They warned. So in Acts 21, verse 20 and 25, Acts 21, verse 20 and verse, verse 20, 21 and 25, when Apostle Paul came from the nations and visited Jerusalem, they told him that, brother, you have done well, God has blessed you. But there are many Jews who believe and they are zealous of the law. And they said, they have heard that you are teaching the, all the Jews just as we are teaching Gentiles that they should not keep the law and the customs. But brother, you know that we have concluded and wrote to the Gentiles that they should not follow this thing, but we, we are Jews. That was why Apostle was telling them that they are foolish, because it is Jews who were to keep those things. That was why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 19, that they should keep the commandments, the Jews. What he warned them in verse 20, Matthew chapter 5, that, they should not use it even as their righteousness. If their righteousness that will not exceed that of Pharisees, they said they he told them they can by no means enter into the kingdom of God. That was what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, 17 to 20. But he, the Spirit was speaking to Luke, who was not a Jew, and looked at the city verse 16 and said, The law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. Since that time, the kingdom of God that is speech. Luke 16, 16. This apostle who is teaching this, look at his testimony. Acts chapter 22, this is what he said. The verse 3, Acts 22, 3. This is what apostle Paul said. I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Syria, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a doctor in law. And taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous towards God as you all know these days. This is the same man who is telling people that they are foolish trying to just start themselves by the Lord. Now in Acts 26 verse Acts 26 let us look at also verse 4 and 5 
what this same apostle said. He said, my manner of life from my youth, which was at first among my own people, my manner of life from my youth, which was at first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, they know me, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sets of our religion, I live a fallacy. So here, Apostle Paul is saying that what the Jews are practicing is religion, it's not Christianity. What the Pharisees were doing, they were practicing religion. It's not Christianity. Christianity is defined as religion, but it's not religion. It's the life of Christ. Religion is trying to satisfy God by yourself. But Christian, Christian priest God by Jesus Christ, not by any person. So if people cannot understand this, they can be classified as foolish, just as the Galatians. They classified as foolish Christians. Somebody will just be justifying himself. So do you think we have to sin? Because if, if, listen, if you sin under grace, if you sin under grace, you shouldn't sin. But if even you sin under grace, this is what the covenant of Jesus Christ says. I will be merciful to the unrighteous deeds, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. There is nothing like that in the law of Moses. In the law of Moses, when you offend and it is testified that you are offended, you need to be killed. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27. There is nothing like mercy, but under grace there is mercy. Under grace, you cannot even sin. Sin cannot control you. Romans 6 verse 14 says, Sin cannot have dominion over you because you are not under the law. You are under grace. Why? Under the law, sin can control you. Apostle Paul said in Romans 7, from verse 7 to 11, he said, He has not known sin except the Ten Commandments word that shall not covet has taught him. So sin took advantage of that and wrought in him all manner of sinful deeds. For without the law, sin was dead. That was what this apostle was teaching. So uh, imagine somebody who want to please God by the commandments, sacrifice, and ordinances that were taught in the Old Testament and doesn't know this. And there's something that is very scary. Second Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 5 to 9, Second Corinthians comparing the commandments that were given from Sinai and the doctrine of the gospel, which is the doctrine of the spirit. He said, God has made us able ministers. You can have ability when you are ministering the New Testament. Because he said the old letter, the old letter kills. Why is he saying kills? Verse 7, he said, that ministration which was engraved on stones, written engraved on stones. The administration of death, and verse 9, they say they are condemnation. Verse 14 and 15, that's Second Corinthians 3. He said, but the people's mind were blinded. So till today, when people read Moses' law, they can't even understand. When they read the Old Testament, so people will still pray Psalms, and still even pray Psalm 90, which was Moses' own prayer. They don't see it. That is why people are fools. That's why Christians become foolish. Because if you cannot understand these things, you will be fooled. And you are seeking for miracles, but you find that you are putting yourself under curse and destruction. I hope you will stay in the blessing. Stay blessed and stay tuned for more.